just made my favorite weekday lunch oatmeal with bananas and blueberries and almond milk and sun butter and cinnamon. It's my favorite cozy lunch for winter. This is always like a winter meal for me. Sometimes it's dinner, sometimes it's breakfast. Today, I think I'm going to make dough for lefsa if I have time. And then that usually sits overnight, but we'll see if I have enough hours where I can just make it tonight or maybe I'll make it tomorrow really quick. Um, I love making lefsa. I bought the whole iron and the rolling thing and the rolling pin with the cover. It's a whole setup. And so it's kind of a pain to get it out every year, but once you do, it's really not that bad. Um, making the dough is the hardest part with the potatoes. It's like a whole process, but it's not so bad because I don't make huge batches of it. Some people make it with a whole team of people over Christmas. Like there, I know my friend does it with all her sisters and they make tons of it so everybody can take some home. But I just make like a reasonable sized batch for our family. Um, but I really enjoy having that over the holiday season. So we'll see if I have time to make it today, get it ready to bake it or whatever. I guess you don't really bake it. It's on like an iron. Um, tomorrow. As my grandpa would say, boofta, it's time to make the lefsa. Isn't that a great mug? Boofta actually is like what you say when something's going wrong. So hopefully I don't say oofta while I'm making my lefsa, <laughs> but I just have to use this mug while I make the lefsa. And I need coffee because it's like a process. This is why it's kind of a pain to make the lefsa. It's like heavy duty equipment in these huge boxes that I have to keep in my basement. And, but it's special. So today I have to use, the only time I would ever use this is my potato ricer to make the dough out of the potatoes. I literally keep it in the box because I never use it otherwise. But it'd be good for cauliflower and stuff, so this is just potato ricer. Then you need all the actual Norwegian gear. And I think this comes from Bethany Housewares. It's like the main place you get this. Or there's a place in Minnesota called Ingebrigtsen's. Um, and like special shops, specialty shops will carry these Norwegian um, tools to make lefse because it's like a very specific thing. <laughs> so this is the lefse grill. It's a big flat top circular grill. It gets very hot, has little um, like legs that it stands on so it doesn't burn your countertop because it's like, it can't, I think there's a warning that it can crack your countertop or, you know, mess up your, so I just do it on top of the stove usually. So there's that. Then you need the Lexa Bethany Housewares accessory kit. <laughs> and this is, um, you need the Lefsa stick, the um, rolling pin with the little lines in it, the rolling pin cover, the pastry board, this big circular, circular thing, and then um, the cloth that covers that as well. Um, it's a whole thing. So this is the board. And there is a cloth that goes over it that you can wash. This is the official Lefsa stick with the little rose mulling Scandinavian design. And it's very flat. It's like a sword or a knife or, <laughs> but it's different than anything else. It has to be this length, has to be tapered down. It's like flat. And you'll see how we use that tomorrow if I do this tomorrow. And then this is the rolling pin cover. I'm supposed to have two of those. I don't know where the other one is. And the special Lefsa rolling pin with the grooves in it. This goes on this. There's a cover that goes on this. And then you get out the grill and you make your Lefsa. 
So basically, I just have to boil some potatoes um, and then, which takes a while, and then you can hear my water going right now. Um, then you run these hot potatoes through the potato ricer into a bowl, and then you add cream, sugar, salt, butter, mix that all up, and then you make a dough out of that. And then I'm gonna make little individual balls of dough in a container, put them in the fridge overnight, and then make the lefse tomorrow. That's my plan. potatoes are cooling down I was just thinking of my grandparents which I can't help but think about them if I make lefse because that's where I grew up eating lefse especially at holidays but even in the summer um, my grandma would serve lefse with butter and sugar anytime we had like an afternoon coffee tea break which they had every single afternoon anytime we were at my grandparents house during the day there would be like a three o'clock afternoon lunch there was like dinner was at the noon meal, lunch was in the afternoon, and then supper was the evening meal. So our lunch was like lefse or some kind of cookie or a treat or a snack. Um, it could be all kinds of things. And then tea and coffee for the adults. And that was just super normal. I haven't really experienced that in other parts of my life, but that's how they did it every day. They'd have a lunch and so yeah, I grew up eating lefts at their house. We always had it at Christmas. Um, and then when I moved to Des Moines, I, it was hard to find. Some some places have it in grocery stores or they have local lefse ladies that make the lefse, but I haven't really found it here. So I had to start making my own and I hope my grandparents are proud of me for <laughs> attempting to make the old school Norwegian stuff that we ate growing up. Um, I lost my grandparents both years ago and so even like my grandma is the crafty, crafty person in my life. And she was always crocheting and sewing and quilting and making everything and then baking and cooking, ba you know, she was a good cook and made all the things. And I just learned a lot from her. So she was always my big crafty influence when I was growing up. And so I hope she's excited looking down <laughs> from the heavens uh, at me trying to make this left so... <laughs> and hopefully it's I mean it always tastes good to me it tastes like the re real thing so I must be doing it kind of right even though I don't I wish I had her or I wish I had someone to show me the real way to do it but um I just follow a recipe and I've got the grill the iron thing and the rolling pin and I hope hope I'm doing it right <laughs> I enjoy it and I enjoy um, give it to my kids and my family and sharing it with them. So that's all that matters, I guess. So this is kind of a small batch. But yeah, I'm going to roll this into little balls of dough. Put it in a little container and stick it in the fridge overnight. Also, I was just thinking, I totally have this beautiful Nordic baking uh, cookbook. And... I think there's a lot more things I can make with my Lefsa iron grill thing. Um, there's like crackers in here and flatbreads and like, this is a really beautiful book. Beautiful, beautiful 
other things that I can try to make this season. Wow. Lots of pastries and breads. Maybe not that on the iron, but somewhere there's like a cracker chapter. That's a very beautiful book. The cracker chapter. These I think I can make. This and the flatbread. Where's the flatbread? Oh yeah. Here we go. We do it like this. The flatbread. So yeah, I need to try some more things. So I've got my dough ready to go and it's cool enough now that I can handle it. And I'm gonna divide this up into some equal size pieces so I can roll out my little balls of dough. I think I'm gonna try to get 12 out of this. Try to get thirds out of these. Oh, that works. Let's see. Got my little dough slices. Then I'm just going to roll each one into a little ball. Got my little balls of dough ready to go. They're looking pretty good. They're a little lumpy, but I think that's okay. And I'm gonna put them in here with some parchment paper overnight. Space them out a little bit so they don't stick together. fridge to rest and I'll get them back out tomorrow. Check back tomorrow for more Lefsa content.
That wraps up day nine. Thank you so much for joining me for Vlogmas. Good night.